G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Well, market still continues to go down a little bit. Look, it's just kind of slowly creeping down at the moment. There's nothing too drastic, but again, maybe that dead cat bounce thing is kind of still in play. Look, again, I'm not too worried. I don't think the market's going to go a whole lot lower than it is at the moment, but it is definitely in a downtrend at the moment. And after all the exuberance that we had, you know, coins that were, you know, 5, 6xing, 10, 10xing, you know, in a matter of sort of, you know, two, three weeks, even when they do that in a couple of months is pretty amazing. That's pretty full on. And there's a, that's, you know, that's kind of a peak. I'm not saying it's the peak for the cycle. I've said this before, but it's definitely a peak. And that's obviously showing at the moment. All right, 1.5 trillion. So that's still not too bad. Definitely down from the nearly 1.8 trillion that we're at. And it's definitely up from the, you know, 800 900 billion that we're at probably only a month ago so it wasn't that long ago so we still have come quite a long way and i think there's a lot more upside btc dominance growing eth dominance dropping gas prices still high all right nothing not a whole lot, not a lot has changed there other than again btc dominance gone up a little bit eth dominance gone down a little bit but i'm guessing there's still a fair few people putting money into stable coins at the moment that's probably what a lot of this is or simply spending their stable coins and now buying the dip. You know, it's hard to know exactly what's happening there. All right, as we can see, look, there's just a lot of red over the last 24 hours, like quite a lot of red. But it doesn't look too bad at the moment, but let's have a look. All right, what's really pumped? There we go, Phantom has been on like such a rise. That's what I mean. It's nearly 4 x in seven days and look just in the last 24 hours it's still going so i don't know much about phantom at all but on quite the rise and look polygon matic this is fantastic you know continues to go up loving polygon slash matic love what they're doing in the direction that they've headed uh, that they're heading in uh layer two and multiple layer two solutions uh looking at sort of going cross chain sort of stuff interoperable interoperability love it Bitmax, didn't even know they had a token. I'm guessing that sort of come in from outside of the top 100. So there you go. Now look, a couple of really good gains, and then we're just into single digit gains. Now look, Stax has been doing quite well. I am you know, kicking myself a little bit that I sold out of Stax, so I may buy in if I see another dip again from some of the profits that I have. You know, But we'll have to wait and see. I'm pretty happy with the, the portfolio that I have at the moment. I can't say too much. But look, so again, there's a couple of double-digit double movers, then there's a couple of single-digit movers, and then we're really just going to get into the losses. So, all right, this is the unfortunate part. Let's have a look. What's really, you know, lost a lot in the last 24 hours in the top 100? All right, ZK Swap got a bit of a beating. IOST, Pancake Swap, MDEX Horizon, Binance Coin, Pundi X. I mean, you know, if you've lost... 10% and you've gone up 100%, you're not too worried. Cosmos has really started to pull back, so I may have to look at getting me some more Cosmos. Polkadot, again, it's still sort of up for the seven days, uh, and likewise, Ren has had a bit of a pullback as well. Nothing sort of too crazy, though, other than really this one, ZK Swap, and I suppose even IOST, that hurts. But, you know, 15% when you've pumped 100 or 40%, not so bad. All right, let's have a look at the charts. So here we can see... This is the Bitcoin chart on the daily. We are clearly in a downtrend. Now, we'll just have to wait and see because this is forming like a little bit of a wedge pattern. So really, you can kind of put this up here. Go down like that at the moment. And then what we have over here is another little bit of a sort of you know wedging pattern. Now, this is really rough. I, I wouldn't pay too much attention to this, but this is a very sort of rough pattern. So really, we should know in the next few days whether we are going to drop down below this or break out and possibly keep following this uptrend. I don't think this uptrend is just going to quickly take up that $58,000 again. Uh, I actually am expecting that, you know, we might break out the top of this, but then sort of come down, and I think we correct it a little bit further. Like I said, I actually think Bitcoin's probably going to come down to somewhere around sort of 43000 44,000 and not just wick down there. I think we'll have a, a legit candle come down there and maybe even lower. I mean, look, this is the 50 day moving average. Oh, excuse me. We're still way above that. So we are still in super bullish territory. Even if we come back down and touch the 50 day, which is down at 40,000, we are still in really, really bullish territory. So again, we move that. That's the 100. 
that's the 200 the, the 200 is a 21,000 now people would freak out and lose their minds if we got the 21,000 and I'll be the first to admit I would be worried if we started coming down here but as long as we bounced off the 200 now we could wick down or close sort of just below it well no I suppose if no I think there has been one time actually that it did just close below it but then it quickly rebounded so you know if we came and bounced off the 200 I wouldn't be too worried if we really went below the 200 well then I would be all right <laughs> the peak was in I completely missed it and I probably wouldn't have sold too much by then because I believe we're going much higher and that would obviously hurt all right so again in the next sort of day or so I think we really should have our answer of whether we're going to break this but just because we break it doesn't mean we can't again it still could be a dead cat bounce bang we go up and no we don't quite make it and then we roll down for another low and this could be prolonged maybe it lasts for a couple of days a couple more hours maybe even a couple more weeks maybe even a month or two i can't tell you with any you know 100 percent great conviction but i mean look at this pullback here we go 8th of january to the 27th of january so that's basically three weeks right there this retracement so again this could be this playing out does this look a little bit familiar hey we went right up we rolled over oh we thought no nah, dead cat bounce and it's kind of fallen back over not exactly a dead cat bounce but anyway we set some more lows so again i mean look at this kind of move this is pretty good this does remind me a bit of this and so we might see this and maybe we might see you know about three weeks where we kind of just slowly trail down we may not i don't really know but we are getting close to the weekend already and we're selling off uh you know somewhat significantly significantly after a pretty good pump though so again i'm not too worried at the moment but i do suspect i won't say expect but i do suspect that maybe we go a little bit lower and again i really am kind of looking for 43 ish thousand 42 44 thousand somewhere around about in there i think we'll find a home down there and possibly get some support because we can see that we've got support down here it's been here before and well there we go maybe even down to around about forty thousand. time will tell all right let's get on to some news because there's been some pretty interesting news and Dreesen horowitz leads 25 million dollar round for optimism's l2 scaling solution ethereum need this so bad optimism a company providing layer 2 scaling solutions for ethereum has secured backing from venture capital firm and coinbase investor Andreessen horowitz or a 16 z Andreessen Horowitz, uh, which manages a portfolio worth roughly 16.6 billion, announced its leading Optimism 25 million dollar uh, Series A investment round on 24th of Feb. So that was yesterday. The demand for Layer 2 scaling solutions has escalated amid Ethereum surging fees. Absolutely, with average transaction costs pushing as high as 40, and that's just average. That's something real basic. You try and do a smart contract. Uh, a smart contract and look at the fee and it can be into the hundreds at times to achieve lower fees lower latency and greater throughput compared to transaction uh, transacting on ethereum's layer one mainnet optimism uses roll-ups to bundle transactions together using smart contracts on an ethereum sidechain before broadcasting them to the mainnet ethereum co-founder co vitalik buterin summarized that roll-ups move computation and story and state and state storage off chain but keep some data per transaction on chain horowitz acknowledged that the growth of ethereum over the past year or so has been a strong indicator of demand absolutely noting the average capacity of ethereum blocks has stabilized near 80 98 percent meaning the network is functionally full completely agree with this people still want to use it but it really is just you know kind of the, the the rich folk who can use it at the moment the average person can't it's just it's too expensive but again they've got some you know some things coming up soon that hopefully are going to help fix that and hopefully some layer two solutions come out uh, and really assist that as well the announcement notes that uh, horowitz spent significant time exploring different layer two scaling solutions before the firm chose to support optimism the firm emphasized that Op optimism's philosophical and technological alignment with ethereum was a significant factor in forming uh, informing their decision to back the team 
All right, there you go. That's some good news. All right, this one is almost laughable, Coinbase. You're killing me. <laughs> Coinbase, decentralization claim draw, draws fury from its customers. In a blog post on February the 25th, so that's today, titled Coinbase is a decentralized company with no headquarters. <laughs> you must be kidding. Come on, Coinbase. Give us a break. You know, you're... Your platform shuts down at the most uh, inopportunistic times and now you come up with silly stuff like this. Maybe they're literally just trying to have a laugh. It's not quite April yet and maybe they're just getting in with a little bit of April Fool's a little bit early because that really is a silly thing to say. Uh, but, you know, they go on to say that 52% of their employees have joined the company and so that's how they consider it, you know, decentralised, I guess. But, yeah, it's not true decentralisation, but, you know... I suppose we can all spruik a little bit of, you know, what's the word? I'm going to say that, you know, they can pitch a little bit of heat there because that's what they definitely did, pitch some heat. All right, so now we go to some troubling news for some people. And again, I've already given my thoughts on this, but we'll go on with the story. Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust is trading at a discount. Should investors worry? Shares in Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust are selling below the cost of the underlying bit, underlying Bitcoin for the first time in five years. Some say that means there's trouble ahead. I don't think that means there's trouble ahead. I think it just means we've hit a peak and so it's come down. You know, what else is there to say? That's just the way it goes. You know, we've, ne we have, you know, we doubled our old all-time high and we did it, you know, reasonably quickly. Of course there was going to be a retracement. Anyone who's been in a market knows that things can't move like that forever. So again, I would not be surprised if we pull back to 40. And look, I wouldn't even be surprised if we pulled back to 30 something. Anything sort of below maybe about 31, 32, I would think, rightio, this is a really, really big correction. And again, once we started to get close to that, you know, 200 day moving average for certain, I would be concerned. But if we bounced from that 200 day moving average, then I would just almost automatically be super bullish again because that's what happens. That's what has happened a number of times in previous bull markets. All right, Dubai. So IBC Group wants to spend one thousand, no, sorry, one hundred thousand Bitcoin to help Mayor Francis Suarez's dream of a Miami crypto capital come true. All right. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez has been making the rounds promoting his city as a global cryptocurrency hub. As it turns out, investors are taking him seriously. So he really has been on the public campaign trail, been talking about you know, wanting Bitcoin to be like a way of paying people in Miami uh, and things like that. And there is a person who is running, I think, for mayor over in New York who's you know, sort of starting to sprout something fairly similar. So it is all happening, you know, Crypto is, you know, slowly but surely, fast in some ways and slowly but surely in others, making its way into the mainstream. Fast for those of us, you know, kind of in it, but also kind of slow, you know. A, a lot of people probably think, I can't believe this hasn't just happened yet already. Rome wasn't built in a day uh, and crypto is going to be the same. It is going to take some time. Yes, finally we have that institutional money coming in, but as I spoke the other day, it's only 5%. It's still a small amount in you know regard in the grand scheme of things institutional wise but look the institutions that have got in at the moment they've put some big money into it and they are going to be those first uh world kind of first adopter movers so i'm, I'm sure that will pay off for them in the future never financial advice though as i always say it's just my personal opinion i'm not a financial advisor all right this is very interesting so an ancient bitcoin whale just moved five million in btc all right, a hundred Bitcoin untouched for over a decade. I can't. That is, you know, they've taken hodl to the next level. Decade haven't touched it. Well done. So it hasn't moved for over a decade. Has just moved. If a long time hodler sold that Bitcoin today, that'd make five million dollars. Not a bad investment considering that Bitcoin was worth a dollar in 2010 it's up 50,000 x that's you know that's pretty good not too bad the coins created in june 2010 moved today at 3 15 p.m utc time in two transactions to two separate wallets it's unclear what happened to them since so it doesn't sound like they have gone to a to an exchange wallet 
uh, but they have been sitting dormant for quite some time. So this might be a over-the-counter sort of thing. So maybe, or, or like a, a personal trade sort of, you know, with some whale who had these back in the day, someone's given him the right kind of offer and he said, yep, no worries, there you go, I'm going to sell, you know, 100,000 <laughs> bitcoins and I'm guessing he's probably got a, a number of bitcoins because I don't think anyone would completely sell out at the moment. But look, maybe some people would, who knows. All right, last but not least, US Central Bank explains preconditions for a digital dollar so they are looking at the digital dollar my personal opinion on this is i think they should just go with usdc it's already there it's already working but you know it being based on ethereum generally uh, and ethereum gas fees is something that they would need to consider so usdc is also on some other chains though which may be able to help with that and hopefully ethereum you know get some layer two you know scaling stuff sorted much sooner rather than later all right so we go down here in a wednesday fed Fed's notes, Fed Reserve Senior Counsel Jess Cheng, Payment Specialist Angela N. Lawson and Technology Lab Manager Paul Wong said the onus would be on broadly engaging the public regarding the pros and cons of a US central bank digital, digital currency or CBDC. Privacy issues, ease of use, security access and delivery mechanisms should all be on the table as Fed officials work to sharpen a digital dollar with the public's help, the paper said. So they're getting out there and they want the public's opinion. Uh, any con consultation should likewise include as broad a cross-section of the US population as possible. I agree, you've got to get out there and you know talk to a whole lot of people, not just a few people. Engaging with individuals, agreed, and businesses, and consulting with consumer groups, community organisations, and business associations to understand the use case for a CBDC will help in the decision whether to issue a CBDC and its potential design. Uh, I completely agree with that. I think it's pretty much guaranteed a digital dollar is coming. Look, if it doesn't come this year for whatever reason, it's still going to come anyway. It's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when it's going to happen. Again, the whole corona thing and you know handing over cash now, that is obviously an issue. Cash is going to go away. Uh, again, I can't speak so much for other countries, but in Australia, we've been a nearly digital kind of, yeah, money place, uh, money country for quite some time. It's not that there's no cash that's there, but most people just, it's what we call pay wave or tap and go. You've probably got similar things overseas and maybe you call it exactly the same. You just get your card, hold it against the little thing, it goes beep and the transaction's done. So that is a digital dollar right there, even though we technically don't have a digital dollar in Australia, that's pretty much what it is. There's no real cash being handed over there. It's just, you know, ones and zeros on a computer screen and things like that. So anyway, that's it from me Thursday night. I was able to get uh, home from work a little bit earlier and put a, a bit more time into my video, which is good because I really didn't have a lot of time to do uh, my last couple working quite late. So I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think the US is going to go to a digital dollar pretty quickly? I honestly think it'll happen this year. I don't think it'll happen overnight. It, it won't do that. But I do see them having a digital dollar this year. I don't think they're going to wait too long to get China, for China to get too far ahead you know, with their digital yuan and that. It's just my personal opinion, though. I don't have any uh, real insight or any inside information uh, on that subject. That's just what I think. Love to know your thoughts down below. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Congratulations to you if you're on that gain train. Most of it's sort of going down at the moment. And I'll see you next time.